Oh yeah, we're getting somewhere now. Well, in the last video you saw, I ripped out the transom, got all the pouring out of there. And today we're gonna go ahead and start working on the deck. And I'm gonna do it pretty much about the hardest way possible. But I think it's gonna work out the best. I think it's gonna save me some time in the end. And I think it's gonna turn out a little bit better. But that's yet to be determined. We'll see what happens. And I hope you're liking these videos. Go ahead and subscribe. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. I don't know if I kind of elaborated enough on this, but my plan is what I'm gonna do is go back with a solid fiberglass deck. And it's gonna take quite a few layers. That's one reason I really shopped around for glass. And I have no idea how thick this is. I haven't cut into it yet at all. I know it's pretty thin from drilling it and putting screw holes in it in the past, but you know, we're just gonna have to see how thick it is. So my original thought was to start at the back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the front because I don't have a canopy yet, obviously. And this way I can put a tarp over the front, jack the front of the trailer up and all the water will run back into the drain holes. So I'm gonna start up here and hopefully in the next week or so, fingers crossed, I'll have that canopy here and set up. But what I'm gonna do is I've been trying to figure out the best plan of action because what I need to do is bring it in a little bit off the sides. I want to leave a little on the sides and taper. And what I've got is I have went ahead and purchased my fiberglass. I was going to use what I have, but it's only a 12 ounce by axle. I ordered some 17 ounce by axle. And the only issue is I found it at a really, really good price. And it's only 30 inches wide though. So that's going to kind of make things a little tricky. But if I come off, I used a two by four actually, I come off three and a half inches on both sides, that'll be seven inches and it's 62 inches wide. So that'll give me enough overlap. I think I'm gonna run my seam in the middle. That way it'll kind of bring the middle up a little bit and I can drain off to the outsides. But that way it'll bring my seam in the middle. I'll have four, three, four inches of overlap and I can taper my sides to taper it in to the original deck. So that's my thought at least. I think it's gonna work, but you know, there's no way to really to tell until you start cutting. So we're gonna do just that. So I'm gonna start right in here. I'm gonna try to leave this up in here because it's still a little swollen and there's two holes up there. But I think if I start here and just drill a few holes in and as I'm working, any, any moisture in there will drain out hopefully. So that way I can leave, save me a little bit of work up in here, but I'm going to go ahead and start right here and we'll see what it looks like. Well, I decided I was going to go ahead. I was just going to cut the whole thing, but I decided just to do a one spot to see what it looked like. Make sure because the way the skiff, these Carolina skiffs are made, every, I think it's like five and three quarter inches, there is a bulkhead running this way that supports the deck. And in between there's foam voids, which you probably know that by now, just in case anybody doesn't. So first thing I wanna do is just see what we're working with here. And I'm gonna tell you, it's already, the deck is a lot thicker already than I anticipated. So. I'm not sure how much glass it's gonna actually take. There we go. Oh well, there's cut number one. Yeah. I don't know, it's got a real thick layer of uh, gel coat. So, I don't know. We'll see, I'll just trim some of that, I'll sand some of that gel coat down and sand the foam off the backside and see what we're looking at as far as thickness. And then I will calculate up with 17 ounce by axle how many layers I'm gonna need. I know it's gonna be at least five probably, but we'll go from there. So one of the main reasons uh, I am not wanting to wait for my canopy before I start doing this is I've gotta know what pound density this foam is. I even emailed Carolina Skiff and they couldn't tell me. They told me that they use two pound density now, polyurethane, two part foam, now for in their holes. But before 1990, which this is in 1990, they didn't have, or it changed ownerships. They didn't have any record 
of what bound foam they used. So I've got to cut some of this out and I guess weigh it or figure some way, but just by pushing on it, that ain't no four pound. It's gotta be two. got one cut done and what I'm trying to do here is cut a little ways on both sides of these bulkheads apparently I was way off I cut right on that one but that's what it is it looked like the dips right here but well, that might not be a good thing to go off of all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this first piece here feel any moisture right I wonder, you can't really tell until you start chipping this stuff up it's gonna suck I think there's, I think I counted, I think there's 30 of these cavities that I've got to cut out. Got to get all the chunks out. Worst part's going to be, I'm going to have like 40 freaking trash bags full of this stuff. All right, well, we got it all cleaned out and I went ahead and took the shop back and vacuumed everything out. And my biggest question, because I got to order my phone, so it'll be here whenever I get this done. And I have no idea. I, Carolina Skiff said they use two pound. From the density, it feels like it's two pounds, but I calculated this out. This void, which is the same as all the other ones, is 0.84 cubic feet. And so I'm gonna say it's one cubic foot. So I'm gonna go put this foam on a scale. I got it all cleaned up and bagged up over there. And I'm gonna put it on a scale and see what we're looking at. Right at two pounds. All right, that's what the gel cut sends it off. We're right, looking at 0.1335. Well, it's another weekend, and I've worked on this a little bit throughout the week, just an hour or so here and there. But I'm working my way back in the boat towards the stern, and man, I I found the water now. And back in here, it's just it's completely saturated. So. I was a little curious because up in here, I mean, there wasn't a lot of screw holes, so it was pretty dry. But boy, back in here, whenever that saw blade goes in, you can see the water flying. Well, I am about whooped and I'm um, covered in dust, but that's all right. We've got 19 more voids opened up and that was a pain, but you know what? We're getting there. We've only got about three and a half, four feet left of the transom, but that is a lot of foam to get out. And it's gonna be a bunch of trash bags. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to bag all this up, tie up the trash bags, and when I'm done, I'm gonna weigh it and see just how much water and how much weight this thing was holding. So all there is to do now, I've took the saws off and went down each side and now it's just time to get to chip and foam. What I've been trying to do is after I get done cutting, I'm taking the shop back and trying to get all the fiberglass dust up, all the dust you see now is from the foam from using the saws on cut it. 
But when you rub all against that fiberglass, it gets all over here and leaning over here, getting this off, it gets all over you and all in you. So I'm just trying to keep everything as clean as I can and stay as itchless as possible. So. All right, well, we're getting somewhere. It's a slow process and I've been racking my brain trying to come up with a better solution than a crowbar to get this stuff out. And what I figured out is the old pick, old Matic, that thing, it makes life way quicker. I mean, I've done three in the time it's took me to do about four and you can scrape the bottom of that and the only thing is you can't scrape on the sides you got to take the crowbar and scrape the sides off but that is way quicker Oh yeah, we're getting somewhere now. Well, it's really amazing to me that how saturated this fiberglass was because it has completely changed colors. I mean, it was a nice yellow color and now that it's been drying, air drying for a little while, it's almost white, which is hard to tell because it's getting dark. But um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait a little while this front part up here, I took out a couple days before I started the rest and got all the foam out. But we're gonna have to wait a little while and let this air dry out. And hopefully all this fiberglass, all the moisture will be absorbed out or evaporated out. And we'll just have to see how it looks when it does. Well, that is just what I've gotten out of two thirds of the deck. Well, that's probably three fourths. Three fourths of the deck, I've got six bags completely full of foam and the first couple feet was not bad but i guarantee you each one of these bags is pounds about 40 probably 60 or 70 and i mean that's that is a whole lot of weight and all the weight really has been from about right here back and we've still got this to go so i'm very curious to see just how much weight we're going to take out of this thing well we've got we started up here at the front and we worked our way all the way back here to the back and I had to leave this last three feet or so three and a half feet just so I've got the tarp on it so the water will run off but I've got everything pretty well cleaned up I had to go through and I took a putty knife and scraped everything after I ripped the foam out and it all came out pretty clean there's some areas that I think they'll be fine this over in here I think it's just epoxy and foam mix I didn't want to scrape up but my biggest concern now is some of these bulkheads here, like this one right here, you can see there's a hole in there and it's pretty much rotten right there and they're kind of soft. So they're not really doing much, but I mean, they're not really, they're made to support a little bit of weight and to keep the deck kind of intact with the bottom of the hole, but they're not really thick to begin with. So I think what I can do, what my plan is and what the next video will probably entail is going through on most of these with a layer of biaxial tape on one side. And most of these, I think, doing it on one side will do pretty good because the ones up in here are still pretty good on the back side, but on the front side, some of the glass is exposed. But I think it will be, I'm gonna sand these down a little bit, and I think it'll work out better doing it this way than trying to rip all these out and redo them because that would be an absolute nightmare it would take me forever but i think it'll work i'm gonna smoke it over a little bit more and decide kind of which way i want to go but i think that's the route i'm going to take so next video that's what this is going to be well that's going to be it for this video i'm going to have to wait a little while for the whole inside of the deck to dry out because it's just full of moisture and i'm going to put a fan on it let it set out in the sun for a little while and that way we'll be ready to get started and I'm gonna probably, I haven't figured out a way to weigh all this foam yet. I don't have a scale to do it like I need to. So next video, I'll go ahead and weigh all this foam and let you know how much weight we took out, but it's gonna be a lot. Hope you like the videos. Go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you next time.